All right, you see it right there. Chicago Sky Night it is going down, and they're right now 9-4 and four to kick off the campaign, sitting at second in the Eastern Conference, just a half game behind the Connecticut Sun and Courtney Vandersloot. Yeah, 7.2 helpers per game. Uh, that leads all of the WNBA, and we know they're defending that WNBA title. And they're welcoming in to Cubs Live right now, it's Azaree Stevens, one of the members and the key components of that 2021 WNBA championship squad. And this year, as we just showed, off to that 9-4 and four start, just a half a game off the pace behind the Connecticut Sun. So how's the season going? It's great. Um, it's really nice to be back. We're all excited. Uh, obviously, we won last year, so there's just – in the off season. like I know we were all anxious to get back. There was a lot of fun energy. So we're just happy to be back in Chicago and chasing our second ring. Okay. Now, you know all about winning because you went to Duke University and you went to the University of Connecticut. <laughs> so when you were able to hoist that WNBA championship, what was it like? Uh – I don't know, there aren't really too many words to describe that feeling, you know, it was just surreal. Like you work your whole life for this moment. Um, so, since when you started as a little kid, you go through college and you hope that when you're at the top level, you can win. So to be able to do that um, and with a team, like it was just incredible. Okay, now you and I spoke right before we got this interview started about your playing days in Connecticut and uh, playing underneath Gino Ariema. And uh, Gino, we know he's an intense competitor. So uh, <laughs> did he set the stage for you? Did he kind of lay the groundwork of you making that move to the WNBA? Yeah, of course. Um, I think that's something that Connecticut does a great job of is just preparing all of us for the next level. And I mean, from the minute I started as a pro, I. There was, I didn't skip a beat, you know, I, nothing really surprised me and, and that's a lot of credit to UConn and just all that they prepared us to do. Absolutely. Now we saw a big time come from behind victory, Courtney Vandersloot with the three yes. triple try to <laughs> put, pretty much put him on ice there. What was that like in that game? Obviously all the emotions running high. Yeah, yeah. Um, a small resemblance of how it was when we won the championship, just a little bit. Okay. Um, because I mean, we were coming back, like that's the same thing that happened when we played in October, um, and just for Sue to be able to hit that shot was just really, really good because I know okay. none of us wanted to lose that game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, you know what? One of the things that uh, fierce competitors do, they always look to make their weaknesses their strengths. And as you guys look to defend that WNBA championship, what are you looking to work on as an individual player? Um, I think just defense, you know. Um, offense, you know, is something that comes, but defense is what wins championships. And, you know, we saw that last year. So every time I come on the court, I'm just trying to do my best to just defend and I'm fortunate enough to defend some of the better players of the league, so I just take on that challenge and try to be the best that I can in that regard for my teammates. Okay, we know that defense means championships in uh, the Boston Celtics. They're a defensive team, but right now it looks as if the Golden State Warriors, uh, they're the front runner. Yeah. So uh, who do you like in the NBA Finals? I'm going to go with the Celtics. Um, shout really? out to Jason, okay. Duke fam, you know. Um, okay. But I like the Celtics. They have a young, like, hungry talent, and we've seen Golden State win before, so... I'm going for the Celtics. <laughs> okay, well, we're still trying to see, of course, Steph Curry get that finals MVP. That's the one thing that is left on his trophy case. But uh, uh, I heard on the street uh, that you're over at Wrigley Field. You were taking some swings. Uh, how's, how's the batting practice cut looking? Uh, I'm not too shabby, I, I must say. I've never, ever, like, done baseball ever. Okay. But That's big Jim Obojkowicz over there. He's giving yeah. me, got, got you. you got a wood he bat gave out me some, there. So, yeah. Okay, what, what did he tell you? He told me to put my right hand on top of my left and kind of swing like down. And see, I hit one. But, I hit a few actually. But like, you know, Jim's a former basketball player too. He didn't uh, play baseball either. So <laughs> I, I, that that the 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 one on one the, the, the <laughs> breakdown. You think you really should have took that advice? <laughs> yeah, we actually talked about okay. doing a game against some of the Cubs players. So we'll see some pickup maybe or something. <laughs> okay, how about Michael Gibbons? Michael Gibbons is out there, former shortstop as yeah. well. He's an East Coast guy. Uh, yeah. What did he tell you out there? Oh, he gave me some tips on how to throw because I might throw the first pitch. So he told me to put my two fingers some sort of way on the ball and then just I'm like I actually was doing really well like okay. I surprised myself I'm not gonna lie okay so you said you might be throwing out the first maybe pitch. I think James is but I'm pretty sure I'm a better thrower than him so we'll see who gets to the final are you gonna try to go back and forth and see if you can actually throw it out or maybe they'll have I'm down for that the first pitch out? <laughs> yeah okay now when it, a lot of people we know that you guys get psyched up when it's time to get out there on the hard court is, is there any kind of music because there's gonna be some music blaring when you're out there and trying to throw that first pitch out if you do choose to do so. Yeah, um, I get really excited for the game, so I always listen to calm music. Like, I listen to Tame Impala, that's my favorite band. They're, they're an Australian band, but they just help me get in the zone, just like, chill. And so, so you're pretty much working out and getting hyped to chill music, is yeah. that what it is? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I, I also heard that you're not a big fan of the AirPods. Uh, you like oh, to no. use cords, you're going no. old school. Corded all the way. 2001. Corded all the way. Why, why is that? Why do you like to use the cords? 
I heard, I saw this article on Instagram that was talking about how AirPods are just the radio, the connectivity, whatever. It's just okay. not good to have all that radio, whatever, right here. So I just, I like the corded better. Okay, so you don't think that uh, the corded one sticking into the phone, that's going to produce just as much radioactivity? But nope. uh, Okay, <laughs> all right. Well, I, I, I'll trust your word for it. You went to Duke <laughs> as well as UConn. And uh, you guys, you're going to be getting after it right here on Marquee Sports Network. Yes. Of course, this weekend, uh, the official home of the Chicago Sky, the Atlanta Dream. Well, they will come to town and uh, win. Trust Arena, that will be the site. It's all going down Friday, 7 o'clock, right here on Marquee Sports Network. As Ray Stevens, thanks so much for taking the time out and uh, good luck on that first pitch and throw from the mound. <laughs> and you know, you can't bounce it, right? No. All right, good stuff. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you.